Greetings everyone, this is Elizabeth. Thank you for joining me today. I thought we would swatch my new gouache colors um, by Arteza. They're not new on the market by any means, but they are new to me. And I do have a video where I unboxed this and I did Octo Lady from AALL Create and I think it turned out beautiful. I'll post the link in the description below. But the Arteza, 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 tomato, tomato, I don't know, um, 60 gouache colors. And gouache is a fun medium to work with because it has the properties of acrylic and watercolors. And granted, you can use some acrylic like watercolors but the one thing you cannot do with an acrylic paint is put it in a little little container and try and use it the next day this unique makeup their chemical properties when you put the gouache in and let it dry so if you have a palette of colors and you're you're done for the day in a week you can go back and use them and all you have to do is activate them with some water so we're just gonna give this a little squirt get our little brush in there move it around and you can see it just it picks up the color so you get to use it just like a watercolor so it's super fabulous I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off set that aside and we'll talk about those little half pans in just a moment first let's look at this box isn't this wonderful it comes with a color guide on top and they have them grouped in uh, some version of a color order okay so the very yellow is oranges and then some purples and blues and then it runs into the greens and the browns the color order is not in number order and I wanted mine in number order, so I took them all out and I kept them in their little trays, but I put them in number order. So when I go to pick up a tray and I see one, then I know that's going to be some 100s, continue to the 100s, and so on. And I won't have to really hunt for the color that I need if I need a specific color. And that is going to be fabulous when, I set that aside, I fill my little half pans. Okay, let me pull out a couple here. Now these little guys, you can get them anywhere. You can get them singles like this, or you can get them empty and in a tin. This of course is not an empty tin, but uh, this is basically what those tins look like. And Arteza, Amazon, pretty much anywhere that sells art supplies is going to have these in empty. They're empty half pan tin sets. Okay. And these little guys are universal. Okay. So I can, you know, if I got a pan that didn't come with these, I could easily put these in. Okay. Super nice and handy. But um, to buy, one that holds 60 or to buy multiples that hold 60 was kind of spendy so I just got a hundred of the loose ones for $9.99 and they do come with which is funny they come with 50 magnets not a hundred but just 50 and they do fit right on the bottom and then you can attach them to something metal so that okay they're actually a pretty pretty sturdy magnet but I'll use these for another craft they won't go to waste so what you do is you take your tube and you just fill it you can fill it as full as you like it does shrink and shrivel up a bit as it dries okay and you can see it's already drying up again ready for the next use okay and that's all right and so I have a paper over there full of these and they're all numbered and they're gonna go right in order with these so when I start with number one I'm gonna pick up my tray number one and just go through and fill them all up and the nice thing is even though there's a hundred in here the other 40 
yeah, I can put two, three colors in one little tray, mix it up and make my own specialty colors. Isn't that fabulous? But to, to get swatching, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a nine by 12 sheet of watercolor paper. Any brand is fine. A lot of your basic generic watercolor paper is very, very similar to everybody else. This particular brand is Canson. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put 60 squares on the sheet of paper. And in order to do that, we're gonna take the long side and mark 1 8 of an inch all the way down. Then you're gonna take your ruler, and don't flip it, okay? If you're marking this way with 1 8, 1 8, 1 8, 1 8, you're gonna slide it down to the other side and do 1 8. Because if you flip your ruler and go the opposite, your lines are gonna be askew and we don't want that. So make your notches. You make one dot at the top, one dot at the bottom, connect, and you make your grid. So one and an eighth across the long side and then mark at one and a half down the short side. And that'll give you a cute little rectangle. And then when your lines are all in, you can either draw a line at a fourth, a fourth-ish, I kinda eyeballed mine, or you can use a piece of, let me pull mine out of the waste bin. I use two pieces of masking tape. This is blue painter's tape. It's some really old stuff that I've had in my stash. And I just kinda eyeballed a fourth of an inch. And basically, that size right there is just big enough for my paintbrush. So if you're gonna use a little bit fatter paintbrush, you can definitely make yours fatter, thinner, however you like. But we're gonna make a black bar, and that black bar is that quarter, quarter inch, okay? And this blue painter's tape that I've had, it's HDX, um, I've had it for years, and these two pieces did, doo -doo -doo, let me flip you over, ta-da! It did the whole sheet. It did all um, six bars of black. So I was able to put down the tape and just paint super quick. It was really nice, fast way to do that. Okay, and I just left all this in pencil line. I don't need it extra fancy or anything like that. And then I have my title, okay? There we go, isn't it beautiful? I'm going to swatch with you a couple of the colors. I'm gonna start with, of course, number one. <laughs> Let me get this out over here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop the lid, make sure my paintbrush is semi-dry mostly dry okay like if I squeeze it I'm not gonna get a water bubble but I will fill water on my fingers and I'm just gonna give a gentle squeeze just enough to grab and then let me zoom in a bit Doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah look at that okay and I'm gonna start right here and just pull it up okay just like so And for each one, get that nicely colored. I'm gonna clean my brush, just swoosh it around in the dirty water cup, wipe it on the sides, go into the clean water, okay? Tappity tap, and it's a nice wet brush. And now I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit for the watercolor effect. Now, of course, we're not gonna see that very well. It's white on white, but this is the purpose of the black. So we get the right out of the tube effect and then adding that extra bit of water like a watercolor. Now, a little tip, if some of these you'll open up and it'll be like uber just spitting out the um, color. What you can do is twist it and give it a tiny squeeze in the other 
other direction, okay? If you, um, just a tiny little squeeze. Sorry, my words have gone. <laughs> you give it a tiny squeeze and what it's gonna do is suck it back down, okay? And if you go and give it a tiny squeeze and it doesn't suck it back down, just turn it a little bit and give another tiny little squeeze. And it should suck that color right back down into the tube. So we're gonna clean this off. I'm gonna grab number two. Okay, again, this is another version of white. Let me, I wanna check something real quick. Yep, okay. And then we're going to give a squeeze. Let's see, right there. Just pick that off. And then again, I'm going to just start in the black and pull it up. All right. And then we're going to clean that off. The dirty water. Clean that into the clean water. Pick up a little bit of water. And then just go into the color just a little bit to pull out some of the white. And we'll see that better next on this gray color. Clean in the dirty, squeeze that, pick up some clean water and squeeze that so that's nice and mostly dry. Pick up our gray, same thing, a tiny little squeeze, a little scoop, and right on top, Look at that. Nice, beautiful gray color. Thick, rich color. Put the cap back on. And we're gonna clean our brush. Squeeze, pick up some water. And then just pull that across. Okay, see that? That's what we're going to do. Isn't that fabulous? And we got that nice watercolor effect. That's what it would look like if we pulled it right out of the pan. Um, after it's dried up like that guy there, we would get more of that effect versus this deep, rich effect. Which is great because you can combine the two methods. You could have your tray of watercolors ready to go and then pull out your gouaches to match and uh, just go to town making some crafty stuff okay dry my fingers grab some black just scoop off a little teeny bit and then just paint that right on beautiful beautiful okay Give that a cleaning. And then again, just lightly pull some of that color out. Look how rich that is. Ooh, these colors are gonna be fabulous. All right, so this is the method that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go right over the black to see the coverage. And don't panic, I probably had my paintbrush a little bit too wet on these ones. They do have good coverage and you can definitely go back and do a second coat and get a really good coverage with those. But I'm just gonna leave it like that so that I know that those might be a little bit thin on the first coat. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of these other colors and I'll see you back at the end.
right, so they are all swatched and beautiful. And <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but I made a boo-boo. I had my two pans of the pearlescent colors mixed up. And so when I grabbed the first one, I didn't read it, of course. And so I grabbed 706 instead of 700. So I just switched those two. And I'll probably white that out and make that a little bit better. But of that, that's not too bad of my 60 colors. So next, and we'll show you these pearly colors. Which will be nice because if you do like a little watercolor wash over something, um, say you're doing some trees and you want to add some shimmer, you can grab that bronze and add some shimmer that way. Especially in the watercolor of method of applying the color, it's just going to leave you these beautiful shimmery spots of color. And I do, ooh, they're so yummy. But I'm gonna grab my little pans here. Woohoo! Look at these little guys. They are numbered one through the 700. <laughs> Let's see if we can actually fill them properly this time. I'm gonna start at the back side. And I'm just gonna pinch from the back of the tube and give her a squeeze. And you can, like I said, you can fill this as full as you want because you can always go back and add more. And that's it. You don't have to do anything fancy. You can tap it down if you want. But uh, yeah, just go like that. And then double check your numbers so that you're adding the right ones. And just go to all corners. Get them in there like so. Put your lids back on. And we will zoom through this. of the beautiful colors set into the half pans and don't ask why they call them half pans <laughs> they're teeny weeny they should be called tiny pens but uh, they're all in there and you can see they're already getting a skin on them that was pretty fast um, and you're probably going Beth we we already know that you filled one of those number 504 right I did that in another video and then I filled it again here okay and I just wanted to show you I basically filled this one half full okay and I filled this one fuller hopefully I think but look how much is left okay there's still quite a bit in there so even if you get this just for watercolor applications you can refill your little pans so many times so it's a great value and again you can use it straight out of the tube with a little bit of water like an acrylic or you can let it harden and dry and become watercolor for you and the nice thing um, if you write on with sharpie and say you made a boo-boo which I do that quite often you can just take a little towel, I better not spray that, the fan's blowing. Take a little towel, little bit of alcohol, okay? And you can wipe most of that off. I'm sure if you worked at it, you could get even more. Um, it's been setting for a few days for me, but that's all right, okay? I can write right over the top of that, 
or just use the other side or get paint on it. <laughs> but uh, this little guy, I think I'm going to add another color to it just to see what it, uh, the fun we can do with that. And then I'll be making 40 other colors to go with that and our lovely swatch sh sheet and see that. And now when I say, oh, I want this watercolor 402, I can go right here to 402 and grab that. That again is why I numbered, put them in number order. I even do that with my alcohol markers. It's much easier to put them away in number order than in alphabetical. All right. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more content from my channel, be sure to click subscribe and make sure your bell is turned on because every Wednesday I do do a live. We create something, don't always know what, but we make something. <laughs> and until next time, my friends, I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay crafty. Bye-bye.